Um, it, uh, <laughs> we literally just set an alarm up. I'm talking here. Was that funny? I think that was funny. Okay. Oh, there's a ladybug. Ah! Devin and I are gonna have a competition to see who can do this hair thing the best. Okay. Oh, Claire, we have to do this tour. Oh crap, you're right. <laughs> hey, um, Pete, do you do you want to join us? I'll take that as a yes. Awesome. I think he's ready to go. Let's yep. let's make a move. We're just gonna do this in silence. I like it that way. So anyway, a bit of a formal introduction. I'm Clara. I'm Devin. That's Pete. Hey, Pete. He's sort of quiet until yeah. you get to know him. Then he won't really shut up. <laughs> All right, we're making it to our first part of our tour. What we're about to walk across is the viaduct. The viaduct kind of serves as the symbol between um, what is academic side of campus and residential side of campus. Um, and so you'll see a lot of folks um, early in the mornings kind of trudging along. Uh, but sometimes, you know, 8 a.m.s are really early. Um, so with that, I will give you a piece of advice. Uh, one of the best ways to avoid eye contact while walking down the viaduct is to pick a space above the person's head so you can look like you're acknowledging them, but really you don't have to have any kind of face-to-face -face interaction. Major key. My favorite is pretending to be on a phone call or texting. I find that that works pretty well. What was that? Oh, oh sorry. I'm sorry. 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 Oh. But of course, if you happen to be walking across the viaduct and Pete the Patriot is also walking across the viaduct, oh my gosh, no matter what you do, you're not gonna be able to escape the eye contact. <laughs> so as our wonderful walk across this beautiful viaduct comes to a conclusion, um, we're gonna find ourselves on the residential side of campus. So we'll have the opportunity to check out some of the dorms um, big thing is that we have two styles of housing here on campus. So we have suite style and we have community oh, style. Sorry, there was and We also bugs. have bugs. <laughs> so um, we'll get to peek at um, one of the community style dorms, one of the suite style dorms, get to show you some rooms. Um, so that's where we're headed. So when it comes to housing, whoa, most of the women's dorms are kind of off of this main road. And so you've got Hearth and Gillespie and Moss and way down there, there's a couple others. And then on this back part of the lot, it's most of the men's housing. So unfortunately guys, we have a bit more of a walk, but it's all right because we have some great housing opportunities on campus. Um, and I will say, as someone who has lived on one end of the campus and had to go to class on the opposite end of the campus, I've made it to class in just about 10 minutes walking with a purpose. Right now, we are in a parking lot. What? There are several parking lots on campus. But fun fact, all of our parking passes are free, which is insane. So I'm just saying, Cumberlands. Howdy, howdy. Howdy. Okay, so now we're just gonna show you what an average dorm room looks like on the men's side campus. Yeah, I'm gonna make sure that no one's inside the brick though. Campus tour. I think we're good. All right. Oh. Oh, that's. Hello. Um. How's it going, Pete? This is. Long time no see. Did we make up? Did you? <laughs> I believe what Claire was trying to say is, did we happen to wake you up, Pete? Oh. Okay. 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 We're good. We're good. Okay. Awesome. Well, there's a couple of things about campus housing uh, on the guy's side, same with the girl's side. All the wooden furniture that you see is provided by the school. So you've got your wardrobe, some hanging clothes, you've got your dressers, of course, for uh, more storage, whether it be clothes or just other little things. You've got your bed, um, as well as some desks. And then, of course, you're more than welcome to even bring in your own desk chairs, your own comfy chairs. Um, same thing, some other people have brought in, you know, their own shelving um, for extra storage. Um, you can absolutely have your own fridge and microwave uh, in the dorms. It just has to be, the microwave has to be under a certain wattage. Um, and then you're also allowed to have your own printer in your room as well. Printing is totally free on campus. 
Um, and I will say that there are some other printing options elsewhere on campus, but you are more than welcome to have a printer in your room. Um, some people like to have, you know, the classic copy station. Pete, do you have any questions? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and that was an even better answer. <laughs> All right, so one big difference between uh, community style and suite style dorms is, oh, um, also, Claire, you probably don't want to go in here, oh. so I'm just going to take this, um, is the bathroom. All right, so the way that it works is this bathroom is shared with kind of the whole side of the hallway, um, whereas in a suite style, which we'll get to see later, uh, you share between the suite rooms. But anyways, you've got your, your sinks, you know, you've got your stalls, and the best thing is, because we love to stay clean, is we have these wonderful showers, right? And uh, just to peek at one moment, oh, 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 Pete, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, anyways, you know, the showers are always available, it's regularly cleaned by housekeeping, uh, and make sure to stay clean. What happened in there? Uh, nothing, let's keep going. Where's Pete? Uh, he'll 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 catch up. He'll catch up. Okay. <laughs> no, so UC is considered one of the safest campuses in the state, if not the safest. Uh, so we are under the uh, protection of the city police. City police are campus police, which is really cool. Um, and then also the other thing is to get into the dorms, you have to have your student ID on you, and hours to access the dorms are restricted based on um, who lives where. So after a certain point in time, when the dorms are closed. Uh, only residents of that building can get in. So it's another cool uh, policy that we have here at UC just to keep us residents safe. Uh, Clara, where are we going to head to next? Okay, so next up on the tour is Parth Hall, which is a women's dorm. And I actually got to live there for like a year and a half. We'll say that. And so Hearth Hall is community, no. Hearth Hall is <laughs> sweet style. So what <laughs> Devin just showed you in Siler was a community style dorm where like everyone on a floor will share a bathroom or share a couple different bathrooms and Hearth is different because there will be eight girls in a suite and then each suite has its own bathroom so it's only eight girls sharing a bathroom as opposed to like 20. Um, but I have found that living in community style there's always availability with the bathroom it's really not a big deal except for during the paint fest when everyone has paint all over them and then everyone rushes to the showers at the same time then you're gonna have to wait a little bit so we are here with residence hall leadership taylor coy taylor coy can you tell us about some of the programming events that happen within the dorms yeah so all the different dorms have um, like weeknight or weekend programming events and so some of the ones that we've done in Hearth Hall before is we had pancake night so students and residents get to come in and get some pancakes and just enjoy. We've had ping pong tournaments out here. We've had like Just Dance Wii game nights. I think in years past we've had like a bachelor party um, to watch The Bachelorette, the bachelor season finale and so that's been really fun. Um, some even, like the guys' dorms typically have like grill outs and they'll play games like cornhole and things outside. Now Taylor Coy, as a student, does that cost any money to participate in? Absolutely not. It's fully provided and funded by your residence hall. There you go folks. Free food, free fun. All the time. It's great. What? Okay, we're here in Hearth. I would also like to point out that for example, if you're like Pete and you need to be disinfected, there is laundry. Laundry is totally free on campus. You just need to bring your own That's detergent. Locked. It's <laughs> locked, but it's available. <laughs> Look through the thingy. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Let us show you. So you have your wonderful washing machines and your dryers. Yeah. Let us step into the suite. Okay, so with suites, suites have lobbies. And so this is a suite lobby, and it comes with, like, couch, table. couch, chair, table with chairs. Yeah, and you can decorate it however you want. So oh. you can decorate it as much or as little as you want, be as fancy or as not fancy as you want. For so, sure. You same. heard it from an RA, folks. She knows what's up. Yeah, some of them are real yeah. What is your favorite thing about UC? My favorite thing about UC? Mm, I like that everybody knows everybody. Like, I love to be able to walk around the campus and say, like, hello to all my friends. Mm. Is I'm the viaduct one of so. your favorite places to interact oh, with people? I'm like, Taylor is one of our friends that does not abide by the avoiding eye contact rule. Absolutely not. <laughs> All right, come along. Okay, we're going to check out a room. Welcome. I hope I'm getting good looks because I don't know what I'm doing. Well, yeah. <laughs> 
Similar to what we saw in Siler Hall, all the wooden furniture that you see is provided by the school. So and it's newish. Brand new. So you've got your beds, you've got your dresser, you've got your desk. Uh, one thing to note in here, the beds are not bunked. Like in Siler, they were bunked. So you have the option based on rooms um, whether you want to bunk your beds or not. Clara, I'm going to let you take this one okay. because I don't want to go in there. You've had hey, some traumatic experiences today. Okay, so this is the bathroom in a suite style dorm. So as you can see, we start off, we've got the mirror. You get two stalls and three sinks. Three sinks is a blessing. Oh yeah. And so regular stalls, y'all know what a toilet looks like. And then most of them come with some sort of stand to put your shower stuff on. And then you've just got a shower. Typical bathroom stuff. No. Are those your goldfish? No, what, what? No, you're... So a lot of the dorms also have random places where you can sit and study. Kind of like this one. So you guys thinking pepperoni or cheese? And like we said, many dorms also have some printers and computers that you can use to do some coursework. So if you're having some laptop issues or need to print a paper out. Printing is totally free, as I mentioned before. Oh use all the paper. Oh. <laughs> Everyone's waving at him. Y'all can't see, but he is waving at everyone. So, Devin, when I'm on campus Hello. Hello. and I'm hungry, what do I do? Well, you can go to one of five eating options on campus, uh, being the CAF. Um, and so, before we get to the CAF, we can talk a little bit about meal plan as well. How the meal plan works is as a student, you'll get three swipes with your ID that you can use in a day at any point during the day. Uh, the only caveat is we have to wait 15 minutes in between swipes, but with that, let's say I want to go to the calf, I take my ID, I'll tap in to use one meal swipe, and then it's all you can eat once we get there. Uh, other places, like Chick-fil-A and Toss, which we'll be able to see later, is one swipe per meal. Um, so the way that, that would work is you just get one swipe for um, some type of combo meal option on the menu. All right, let us enter the calf. Oh, there's a ladybug. Oh wait, and a, I don't know what that is. I think it may have been a buggy, another bug. Let's not dwell on it. For sure. So now, we This is the lobby of the cat. Are in the cat. I spend many a minutes here waiting for my friends to arrive before going inside to the buffet. Indeed, indeed. Uh, we won't be able to go inside, but we can talk a little bit about, and you'll be able to see uh, in more detail with some other content that we're gonna show you uh, what kind of happens inside the cat. But the biggest thing, is that the calf has a lot of variety. Um, so one of the biggest things is Fiesta Friday. Uh -huh. So Friday you'll walk in, you get nachos, you can do burritos, tacos, whatever. Uh, build your own kind of burrito, taco bar. Um, but again, the calf will always have uh, a bunch of different options. So if you're ever tired of getting too much Chick-fil-A or too much Pete's Eats, uh, don't do what I did and use 13 consecutive meal swipes at Chick-fil-A, not advised. Um, cool. I did not feel good afterwards. <laughs> so the calf will always be there for a bunch of different options. Um, and again, there's always going to be a menu posted whenever you walk in. I really like the Asian chicken with rice. Oh, okay. Oh, anytime I come in there, come here and they have that, I get really excited. But also, they have ice cream mm. that you can have every day, multiple times a day, as multiple much as flavors. You want. It's dangerous. <laughs> okay, um, Pete, what was your favorite meal that they have at the calf? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't really like that one. Guys, I would just like to take a brief pause to point out the beauty of this campus. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, but for real. <laughs> like, from every angle you can see mountains. That one's King Mountain, and it's, it's a cool place. Um, has a beautiful view of campus. And there's just so much beauty to take in here. I absolutely love it. So, Clara, tell us a little bit about where we're going to head next. Okay, so where we're going next is the Boswell Campus Center. But on our way there, we can actually see the lawn that's in front of it right there. I can't walk and move this at the same time. Um, and so the BCC lawn has a lot of fun events on it. There have been some, like, I think some little concert type things in the past. But also the Patriot Party happens every welcome week. And it's just... A party full of patriots. 
Indeed. Uh, and then even our president, so Dr. Cochran will be down here. He'll set up a tent. You get to shake his hand, get a free t-shirt. Free t-shirts are crucial. Um, like Clara said, there'll be food trucks. Um, a lot of us people um, love and enjoy something called Nine Square, which is basically like volleyball and four square put together. So we'll have spike ball, cornhole, or for those of y'all that um, might need a little help, so that I call it bags. Uh, it is cornhole though, sorry to ruin it for you. Um, oh, looks like our good friend Patriot Pete here is digging the lawn. Exercising. Oh, oh! That was the best cartwheel I've Beautiful. ever seen. Let's see if this is open. Ah, oh, Pete, hello. Thank nice you Nice of you to in. join us. Well, we're in the wellness center. Um, it, uh, <laughs> we literally just set an alarm up. It's still going off. It's been 20 days now. And it's still going off. But there is a man to help us. Yes. We're going to see if it works. So, in the back of the wellness center, there's always a calendar that has events for the month and maybe some different, yeah, some workout of the week that has different exercises that you can do. And so our campus does a really good job at promoting fitness and wellness. Um, and so it's a great time. They're doing the most. We also have an air hockey table. I forgot about that. It's pretty new. So now we're in the back part of the Boswell Campus Center frequently called the BCC. And so with us being on the middle floor, everyone refers to it as the mid BCC. Yep. And so kind of as we've made our way up the stairs from the health and wellness center, um, what you'll kind of see over here um, is we have these wonderful, you know, class portraitures of handprints of everyone in the class. Um, also just like to point out that this side that we're on is a bit more of the quiet study area. Um, so sometimes it wouldn't be too often to see someone taking a nap because sometimes the 8 a.m.s are just too early. Well, let's head next door. I want to point out my handprint, Devin. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So I mentioned the class portraitures and the handprints. So Clara's is actually over here on the class of 2020. Clara, can you show us where your handprint is? This is my hand. Can't you tell? Wow, it's a perfect fit. That's incredible. <laughs> Go Pats. And then if you, you can also see down in the wellness center from here, and so another thing about the wellness center that we forgot to mention is that throughout the week they'll have classes and all of those classes are free. So. Wait, um, should we wake him up? Oh, yeah, Pete's still asleep. Let's break him. Oh, he's still asleep. What do we do? Okay, um, I think he's pretty ticklish. If you just want to like, we can just get I'll get his the pit on his right side. You okay, get the pit get on his left okay. side. <laughs> wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <laughs> Come Sorry, on, let's buddy. go. <laughs> you can't be smoothing on the job, Pete. Jeez, Pete. So as I mentioned before, one of the eating options on the meal plan is Starbucks. Um, so what you can do with your student ID is you can come to Starbucks and you can use one swipe for like a specialty coffee. Uh, you can do a black coffee and a muffin. Um, or there are also other grab and go options available for lunch. I've got a Pete special. Pete special, anybody? Pete special. Pete special. Pete special. Pete special. So we're still in the mid BCC area with Starbucks over here. And then the rest of this space is just kind of hangout space. So many times during the week, I'll come in and people will do, be doing homework here, playing games with their friends, just chatting with their friends. It's a really good time. And Pete hangs out here quite a bit. Um, but also here, we have the bookstore. And so the bookstore is where you can get all your inventory of swag yeah and you can also order your textbooks from here and then also um, some of y'all may have heard you know prior to this academic year that we cut tuition by 57 percent 57 percent 57 percent another thing that the school is doing is we're offering free textbooks to undergraduate on campus students. free textbooks to undergraduate students on campus what she said and so i think i averaged between like six and eight hundred dollars a semester on textbooks that's a lot of money over four years uh, eight total semesters and then you also have the option to uh, purchase them if you'd like otherwise it's basically like renting a textbook keep it in good condition turn them back in free of charge 
Another thing that we have available on campus is a fully functioning post office. So you can send and receive mail. Some schools can have a really complicated system of you know, addressing mail so that it gets to your dorm room. Um, but thankfully here at UC, what we do is it's just your box number, College Station Drive, Williamsburg, Kentucky. And so then all you gotta do is just write that address down, pass it on to mom and say, hey, share that with all the rest of the family. And then you're good to go. Oh, the mailboxes are free now. I have not been informed of that. So that is awesome. So just ask for a box and you get one. I just show my ID to our wonderful friend here. And then he grabs a package, you sign it out and you're good to go. I'm gonna check my mail. Oh, well, let's go check our mail. <laughs> Don't look at the numbers. Oh, we can't look. Sorry. Privacy concerns. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. I actually got some. You got mail. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. Adulting. Yay. Great stuff. Let's Congratulations. Let's see if he has anything. We He's do it. it wrong. Thankfully, our boxes are extra secure. We shall return. Momentarily. For bar break. I'm hoping that this is where we'll cut the video so that he can open his mailbox. Yeah. I oh, believe Pete. Pete is about to open up his mailbox. Let us see what he has acquired in his mail. Let us see. Slowly but surely. Can he do it? Oh. Uh, Nothing. Uh, You're all over the place. Come on, dude. Be humble. Yes. And he's there again. What? Come on. Dude, Pete, it's like this campus knows you. I wish I was that cool. All right, let's go upstairs here. Gonna head to the top floor of the BCC, which us students love to call the grill. Yeah. It is home to Chick-fil-A and Tops, two other eating options on campus. <laughs> so we are in the grill. This has a lot of seating for everyone. You don't necessarily have to be eating to be in here, but if you do, that's just a plus. And so every day, starting at 11, the grill will open for lunch and then they will be open until 10 p.m. dinner time. And yes, Chick-fil-A is closed on Sundays here. Unfortunately. Yes. It's worth mentioning that both Tost and Chick-fil-A have gluten-free options. Uh, for example, like our friend Pete here, uh, if he does not have his gluten-free options, let's just say you don't want to be within about 15 feet of him because it gets a little... Um, but yeah, this is also probably the quietest you will ever see this space because this place is popping once 11 o'clock hits. Um, so yeah, not a lot of schoolwork is probably getting done in this space but definitely a place to kind of sit, relax, get away from academic stuff, be able to chat with some friends, have some downtime in between classes and enjoy a nice meal. So I seem to have lost Clara and Pete somewhere in this empty you know, grill space, uh, but I think it's worth noting too, um, while I'm looking for them, that the grill does have some cool balcony seating. So let's check that out real quick. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, it's not what it looks like. Um, we're just, uh, uh, dad! Right now we're crossing Walnut Street, um, which is just the road between the BCC and the rest of academic campus. It's uh, a one-way street. I feel like that's important. Are you ready? Okay, Devin and I are gonna have a competition to see who can do this hair thing the best. Okay. I shall take this. Thank you, Pete. Claire has gone with the high pony approach. Um, it appears that it was a successful, mm, I just got whipped with the hair. <laughs> All right, so anyways, we're gonna continue walking through academic side of campus as I try to include Clara in our wonderful shot here. Um, so I'll point out the different academic buildings, um, what areas of study are located in those buildings, kind of what maybe your interaction with it as a student will be. Um, and then we'll just kind of walk on through and get to chat a little bit uh, about each of them. One thing I want to point out before we get to that is our good old friend Abe right here. Clara, can you tell us what is important about our good friend Honest Abe over here? Our good friend Honest Abe. Pete, you're in the <laughs> Anytime students have tests or quizzes that they're nervous about, you take a penny because whose face is on a penny? Honest Abe's. Da! And so you're gonna take a penny, you're gonna to go to his rear side, you're gonna place said penny in his hands, and he will grant you good luck, and you will not fail. I can't say you'll get an A, but you won't fail. Well, as we're walking, uh, I'm gonna point out this building right here. This is the Bennett Building. 
Um, so the Bennett Building is actually home to our Missions and Ministry Department, our History Department, as well as our English Department. And so when I say that a building is home to a various academic department, it means that all the professors that are teaching within that subject, their offices are located in there. Um, so every professor is required to have office hours where they are in their office, door open, available for you to come in, ask any questions, um, or some professors even require meetings to be set up during those office hours. So also, I want to point out that that green roofed building right there is Campus Ministries, um, and then also the building next door, Nicholson Jones, is uh, home to a few different things. Nicholson Jones is home to the ROTC offices, uh, so if you're interested in that program, um, that is probably where you'd have a few important meetings. Any instructors in that program would be located. Also, student success offices are in there, so your student success coordinator, who will basically be your academic advisor until you officially declare your major, their offices are located in there. And then the top floor is our esports arena for our esports team. So if you're interested in uh, being a part of the esports team, that is where a lot of those practices and competitions would take place. Quick tidbit. You mentioned your student success coordinators. So those are basically gonna be your best friends freshman year. And so you'll meet with them, you'll hear about them during welcome week and during SOAR. And then your first and second semesters, anytime you have problems with your schedule or classes, or maybe you're just feeling homesick and you need to talk, your student success coordinator will be there in your corner. And you'll also be given an orientation leader, which I've been one. Pete, have you been an orientation leader? He's been an orientation leader. Maybe you'll have him, I don't know. Um, and they're just there in your corner. They're fellow students who are just a year ahead or maybe two or three years ahead um, who are ready to fight for you and answer all your questions about your college transition. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Clara. You're welcome. Yes. Uh, the next building that we're gonna have us peek at is this building right here. Clara, would you like to tell us about what this building is? What is this? This is the Corel Science Complex. And so if you're a chemistry major or a biology major or a math major, most of your classes are gonna be in here. And even if you're not one of those majors, you're gonna have some gen ed requirements you gotta get out of the way. So odds are you're gonna be in this building at some point. This is where all of our science and math classes are located. Awesome, I'd also like to point out too that the Corel Science Complex is home to the largest lecture hall on campus. Um, I wanna say that it fits about 40 to 50, maybe 60 students. So uh, some of you all may have experienced um, some campus tours, campus environments with very large lecture halls that hold hundreds of students. I can assure you if you're intimidated by a lecture hall experience that even our lecture hall here on campus is still a smaller classroom than most. Um, so just wanted to share that. Also, Pete, um, did you know what time it was, Devin? Oh, I think... Pete, I think you have class. Yeah, you should get to that. I think you've got like a minute left, so you might, you might want to run. Awesome, so where are we gonna head to next, Clara? I think we're headed to the Gatliff Chapel building. You are correct. Ah, let's head there. Let us move. I think Pete might be having some problems getting into oh. his classroom. Let's hope that Pete is not late to his class. Let us enter Gatliff Chapel. So for the last like four minutes, we've been trying to get into the Gatliff Chapel and we heard what sounded like a meeting going on. So we went stealth mode, went upstairs, peeked around and there is someone listening to some kind of broadcast in the Gatliff Chapel on their laptop. So we are just not going to walk in there. So anyways, we're walking through the Gatliff Chapel right now. So aside from being the campus chapel, there's a few offices that you want to know as a student. Um, so one of those being the Bursar's office where you will pick up any kind of work study check or make any kind of payment to your student account. Uh, the registrar's office where anything adding or dropping classes related uh, will be taken care of. And then upstairs is the financial aid office where typically you won't have to go uh, to the physical office as much as a student. Um, but it's also nice to know just so if there are any issues you can go to the offices. But usually it's just getting an email from their office, accepting your financial aid and you're good to go. And of course Gatliff Chapel, the actual chapel is in this building. Um, but aside from being the home of different campus ministry uh, environments, there's also a bunch of events that happen on campus in the chapel as well. Um, so for example, the Campus Activities Board, um, they have something called Spotlight, which is like our version of American Idol. That happens in Gatliff Chapel. So the school does bring in a bunch of different um, fun little entertainers, performers, um, as well as hosts, you know, different ministry things inside of Gatliff Chapel. <laughs> I don't feel like we're very funny. That's yeah, all right. We got to be kind like of informative. Funny. I'm just funny looking, is what they tell me. 
We just walked into the volleyball gym, which is where I like to ball out on Thursdays. I'm kidding, I don't ball out anywhere, anytime. Um, but this is where our volleyball team will have their games and practices. But also, if you're taking classes like yoga or maybe even wiffle ball, I think this is where they meet. I know yoga meets in here. Um, but it's a great time. It's newly renovated. You can't really tell right now, but the floor looks amazing. Yep. And then also intramural basketball happens in here, so if that's a fun activity that you want to get involved with, those games will be happening in here. And then sometimes sports teams outside of volleyball um, will also use this space for indoor practices as well. So if you're a prospective athlete, know that um, in the cases of crazy weather, I know I myself for lacrosse have had practices in here, um, soccer's been in here, um, but then wrestling also has meets in here. Um, so a bunch of different things happen in this space um, that both as an athlete and a student, uh, you can participate in and have a lot of fun. I'm not an athlete. I don't know these things. <laughs> Let's head next door. Okay. Yes. So we are now in the lobby of the O. Wayne Rollins Center. Um, right here is the entrance to our basketball arena. Um, so if we want to, we can go ahead and start heading this way. Okay. So this is actually where my dorm is. I live right here. So if you've seen Harry Potter, um, like Clara that. is like Harry Potter. She lives under the stairs, but in this case, it's the bleachers. Yes. Yeah. Now we're here. <laughs> this is Randy Vernon Court inside of the O. Wayne Rollins Center. Um, so I'm just going to give you all a good view of kind of what's going on here. Um, so this space will have, of course, our men's and women's basketball teams and their competitions held here. This is also where graduation takes place, uh, walking across that stage right there. Um, also, uh, there's a thing called the Forks Leadership Conference. Um, where every spring the school will bring in big names such as you know Shaquille O'Neal, Layla Ali, Terry Bradshaw, just to name a few that have been here, as well as a bunch of other names. So that is one thing that happens in here. Um, another thing, Claire, do you want to tell us a little bit just about maybe Pat Serve and Shoots for the Soul, two other oh, events that happen in this space? Those are great ideas. Okay, so here we have a strong emphasis on faith in action, which is basically how are you living your faith out? What actions are you doing? And so we have two different events. We have more than two events, but these are the two that I'm going to talk about. One is called Choose for the Soul. And so it's where we bring in a bunch of elementary school students from this area and they come for a day and we allow them to play some games. I think give them some ice cream, paint their face, give them a backpack with some school and hygiene supplies. But then the best part, in my opinion, is we have a lot of chairs lined up with buckets of water and we wash their feet um, in a similar fashion to how Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. And so it's humility, it's loving others and putting others above yourself. And it's just an amazing experience, honestly. And I just want to add to with that, a lot of these kids that are coming in for Shoes for the Soul are wearing the same shoes, having the same backpack that they got the year before. Um, so UC recognizes that we're in a place that's kind of right on the edge of one of, if not the poorest areas of the United States geographically. And so the school really has a mission and a mindset of giving back to the community, um, and some of which is being instilled and passed on to our student body here through events like Pat Serve and Shoots for the Soul. Um, and so that's one thing I think I personally really like about this institution is that there's a service mindset and it's not just a lot of talk, but we're going and we're serving. Mm -hmm. Um, and so kind of on a similar note, Clara, do you want to tell us about Pat Serve and a bit more about what that's about? Yeah, and real quick, let's choose for the soul. I completely forgot to say, after we wash their feet, we give them a new pair of shoes. That Kind of, uh, kind I, of important. Kind I of. totally love that out. It's <laughs> fine. Um, <laughs> but also, with Pat Serve, once a year, we'll have all of the undergraduate students um, who are enrolled in UC Engage. We'll have them come in here and they'll break up into different teams and then actually go out into the community and serve. So I know a couple of years ago, I was painting fire hydrants. Um, we've got people cleaning different lawns, painting different things. And it's just a really way, a really good way to show the community that we care and that we want to give back. And so it starts in this building, but then it springs out all over Williamsburg. For sure. And we're going to keep walking until we get some better lighting because I feel like we can't see nothing. It's dark. Yeah. Yep, so again, this space is one of the only spaces that holds the entire freshman class. So uh, we mentioned Welcome Week, we mentioned things like the Patriot Party, and kind of that first week of classes. A lot of your orientation stuff is going to begin in this space. Uh, one thing I also just love to talk about while we're over here is actually our Patriot Swimming Pool. So oftentimes when you walk by, you will see the swim team drowning in here. Um, just kidding, not all the time. Uh, but if they're not practicing, then there are times for the pool 
uh, to be available to students as well as community members. And we're really proud of our, not just our swim team, but all of our sports teams here at UC. Uh, and so this is one of the places that you can watch some greatness happen. So other than that, we can keep on moving. Awesome. Let's step out into one of Clara's favorite places it's on gonna campus. It's going to be really loud. Yeah. Woo. Oh, and when? Yeehaw. Okay. I'm talking here. Was that funny? I think that was funny. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this is one of the best places on campus. It's beautiful and really quiet and serene and peaceful, as you can probably tell. So, right now we're doing some demo on the library. You'll get a better view up here. Let's go. Let's move. Here. Okay, so we've just demolished the front steps of the library. There used to be some steps literally right there. They're gone. No more. Yes. So, our library is currently going through like a, a million dollar renovation. Um, more specifically, seven and a half. Um, we got a grant for five million, and then the school said, hey, we'll tack on uh, two and a half on top of that. Um, but it's going to be really cool. They've shown some different little plans for the library, and it's going to look amazing. Yeah, so just to speak a little bit more to that, um, the middle level of the library is basically going to be a mid-BCC 2.0. So where we showed earlier with Starbucks and a lot of the hangout space, they're actually going to add kind of another coffee shop, sandwich shop option that will be on the meal plan. There will be a lot of kind of communal seating, comfy seats, little study spaces. The top floor will be maybe a bit more um, you know, quiet, quiet study space, group study rooms, um, just a bit more secluded. And then the bottom floor again was previously academic classrooms as well as like Clara mentioned, you know, the human services and criminal justice part. Um, I believe they're going to keep the bottom floor similarly academic in nature. Uh, but with all of the renovation, they're also doing a technology upgrade. So still brand new printing, new computers, and again, all free to access for us students on campus. And this should be done sometime during the fall semester. Right now where we are standing in front of our lovely renovating library um, is also our wonderful fountain, which is not currently on, but will be on and it is a beautiful sight. Uh, but then with that too, kind of across the way here, we have the Grace Crumb Rollins building, uh, which Clara, I believe you're pretty familiar with that building. Oh uh, yes. I am, Devin. Let's get away from these noises. <laughs> During my time as an undergraduate student, I, in part, was a strategic communications major. All things communications and theater are housed in the Grace Crumb Rollins Center. We actually have a really nice theater in there. And then just a few classrooms and a radio station and a digital media studio where you can go and edit photos and videos. Uh, so on the opposite side of the library is this building right here, um, just across the way from the fountain. This is the Luker building. And so in the Luker building is the education department, it is the health exercise sports sciences department, as well as the art department. And so Clara just mentioned that in the communications building, you know, we have our theater department. Well, part of that program is actually student produced and directed plays. Uh, in the theater. Well, similarly, in the arts department, there is actually an art exhibit that senior students can have the opportunity to uh, put on an art show with all of their artwork that they've produced throughout their time here at UC. Um, and then also there is the Lucre Annex, which is just behind it. That is the psychology department. All right, so as we're walking, um, we are going to be able to see the Hutton School of Business which is this building right there. So that is of course home to our business department. That is where the information technology classes are. So I'm an IT science major uh, specializing in cybersecurity, uh, but all those IT classes also meet in there. It's also home to our graduate business program. Um, so you'll see sometimes some grad students walking in and out of there. Um, I mentioned before that I lived in one of the residence halls on one end of campus and then attended classes in this building that is on the polar opposite end and I could still make it from this building to my residence hall in 10 minutes. So I can tell you that if you walk with a purpose, you can make it anywhere on campus in 10 minutes or less. Very big important information. Okay, so now, <laughs> do I do weird voices in this? I don't know. Okay, so now if you look over this way, ah, that is a field. That is the field. <laughs> That's a field <laughs> where you can do things. Field things. Yeah, like ultimate frisbee. Um, unfortunately, you cannot participate in underwater basket weaving on this field. Mm. Um, no, but so more specifically, this field is uh, what we call the band field. Um, ah. Yes, yes. So I thought it was that. I mean, it's kind of both. We call them both. The band field is more specifically 
this field over here, but we just kind of refer to it all as the band field. But that being said, uh, the band field or this space to our left, like Claire said, you know, various games like disc golf, ultimate frisbee, soccer, uh, a lot of students will um, use that space for kind of whatever. It's again, another public field space. One other really cool thing that is near this field is our outdoor fitness court, which Clara is so wonderfully showing us how to use. This is exactly how <laughs> Great job, Clara. Thank you for showing us. You're welcome. <laughs> With that, um, it is also important to note, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about classes at the Wellness Center. The Wellness Center does a outdoor fitness court uh, boot camp. So one of those classes is coming out here to this fitness, uh, fitness court sorry, and showing us how to use all the equipment. There's an app that goes with it um, to help you track your workouts. Um, again, it's another great resource for us students to have. As well, you can see this nice little gazebo and then the pavilion behind it. Um, those are other places that students are welcome to hang out. You know, maybe you're feeling a break from you know, the dorm room. You can go read a nice book outside, hang up a hammock. There's actually some hammock poles that you can kind of see. So they have little notches on it. You can stretch up your hammock. I personally love my Eno. Um, I'll set it up there on a nice, cool, breezy day, get a good book, relax. Um, and then also there's a sand volleyball court back there as well. So I do want to mention, um, as we've kind of looked at the different academic buildings uh, and the different areas of study, we've talked a little bit about, you know, different sports and teams available on campus. Um, you are absolutely welcome to reach out to our admissions office and request more information on any of our academic programs um, to meet up and communicate with a sports coach. Um, if you are someone who is trying to play different athletics, um, including eSports here at UC, then by all means, feel free to utilize the resource of our admissions office because they will absolutely make those connections for you. You want to learn more about our IT to progr uh, program or maybe our education program or our communications program. Note that in your uh, communication with the admissions office and they'll be sure to get you the resources that you need. Clara, can you tell us what this building is? Yes, this building is the backside of Grace Crumb Rollins which is connected to this building, which is the Mary McGaw Music Building. That is correct. And so this is where all of our music classes take place. We've got band, we've got like concert band, jazz band, marching band, and a couple different choirs as well, um, who all meet up in here and they'll have some concerts in here and in different places. They have concerts in multiple places because they're that good. Yes. Um, but they meet up in there and it's a grand time and then you can take classes um, just to get better vocally if you like singing. Um, they just have some really great opportunities and we've got an amazing music program here at the university. And if you're someone like myself who is not very musically inclined, um, but you still may end up in that building. Again, Clara mentioned a little bit about general education classes. You can take a music appreciation class um, that would be located in that building as part of your gen ed requirements. So we had that class together. We did, we did. And uh, again, I just want to say that our, our musicians on campus are very talented. I know a lot of them and they're really awesome. So again, shout out to just the UC student body. Um, there's just a lot of incredible things happening on campus. Hey, Devin. Hey, Clara. What's your favorite thing about Cumberland? Oh goodness, I think my favorite thing about Cumberland's definitely has to be uh, the community and the friendships that I've made. Um, you hear the cliche all the time, you know, that your friends that you make in college um, are the people, the friendships that you're going to carry with you kind of for the rest of your life. Um, and I kind of was like, yeah, yeah, I get that. But um, honestly, my experience here at UC, uh, if nothing else, has absolutely proved that to be true. I know for a fact that um, all of the people that I've met and that are now my good friends on campus, I know that I will be able to rely on, lean on, um, and even just the connections made with professors, um, just the relationship and the community that is ever present here at UC's campus is definitely something that I will treasure uh, just in my time here. What about yourself, Clara? Um, yeah, kind of like you and I think everyone else that we've asked, everyone's kind of hinted at community and how close-knit everything is here. Um, I'll say that in high school, I thought that like that was the peak of friendships and stuff, mm -hmm. but when I got to college, I realized like how much deeper we can go with friends. Mm -hmm. And so I have a support system here that is amazing. And at this point in my life, I feel more at home here than I do back at my actual home. And I think that's because of the friendships that I've made. So I would just, I'm trying to think of a saying, but I think it's not to beat a dead horse, but that sounds really graphic. So I, <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. Um, but to reiterate what everyone else has said, I would have to say community. Absolutely. Um, sweet. Well, we have arrived back at the admissions building. 
Uh, Clara, it appears that our tour is coming to a conclusion. No. I know, I know. It's been a great experience going around. I hope um, that we've been able to provide insightful information. Um, and again, I would encourage any of you all, by all means, please reach out to our admissions office, to any kind of connection that you may have here at UC as we have these wonderful noises. Um, by all means, feel free to reach out. Um, again, admissions is always available. Um, students like myself and Clara who are working with the school, we are always available to answer questions. Uh, but we appreciate y'all's time. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Clara and I, we just want to wish you all the best of luck on just your college search. And we hope that it brings you back to UC. Yeah. Go Pats!